we know that uh, cavitation causes damage and it eats into the toughest of metals which are there in agitators, impellers or propellers. Up till now the designers were thinking how to actually remove it and all the efforts were to that. If there is so much of energy which it can actually eat into the toughest of metals, we thought that this energy if harnessed properly can really do wonders and that is why we have positivized the cavitation energy. We are not the first, I will just show you a small clip which shows that it has been happening for millenniums. What you see on the screen is a snapping shrimp. It has got an oversized snapper claw and a normal claw. What it does when it sees its prey, it cocks open the claw and shoots a jet of water at 100 kmph. The moment the ambient pressure becomes lower than the vapor pressure at that temperature, a cavitation void or cavitation bubble as we call it forms and the moment it collapses, that is where a very interesting thing happens. If you see it on the screen, you can see a flash of light. The temperature at that point of collapse is around 10,000 degrees centigrade. The pressure is more than 5,000 bars. There is a huge amount of turbulence and because of the temperature and the combination of all these things, free radicals are formed. So what our uh, invention or innovation is all about is we know how to create this bubble, how to make it go to a particular distance in a particular direction, grow it to a particular size and collapse it. That is all we have actually achieved. By achieving this, we can have an order of magnitude efficiency improvement in physical, chemical and biological processes. What can we do? Uh, the, what you have seen the shrimp does for millennium, so obviously it is not patentable. So what our uh, core uh, invention is, is we know how to exactly modulate the temperature, the pressure, the turbulence and the free radicals individually. That shrimp has pro probably produced a few bubbles by which it kills its prey. In our reactor, we produce millions of bubbles which in a flowing fluid slurry, it collapses at each point inside the reactor with the specific characteristics which I have told you about and that is what brings about the transformations. How does a typical equipment look? This is uh, what has been fitted uh, in the Godrej uh, Vikroli plant. This particular equipment is for prevention of biofouling in cooling towers. The same thing happens, we, here we are using the collapse of the bubble to get to do physical damage to the microorganisms which are there in water. So at each point in a flowing fluid, the bubbles are collapsing and it is killing the microorganisms. But this uh, thing looks very similar in all the other applications also. It does not, as you can see, it does not require any external energy uh, input for this. You use the centrifugal pump which runs the, which pumps the fluid itself for doing all these things. What are the various things which we have uh, applied it for? One is for uh, biofouling prevention like I had showed you. Here, I mean, I have been told to give some cost estimates. We can say that uh, on a, a rough basis, we can have a payback within one and a half to two years maximum. Most of it, it is far less than that. For online mixing, again, we use the turbulence for this. Here, we do not need agitators. We do not need uh, any separate tank for this because of which you can have a humongous uh, space saving, cost saving, I mean uh, energy saving, any which way you look at it, it is uh, supremely efficient. You can have molecular level mixing uh, at uh, with this reactor. Normally what people do is they just uh, dump the chemical at some uh, corner and you expect the static mixture or the agitators to take care of it. Here you do not need anything like that. It is online, one shot, you can just uh, do it. Because of the high temperature, the next product is for molecular breakdown. For high, at high temperatures, the molecules break down. So you can actually use it. You need far lesser chemicals to neutralize the effluents. You can have other uh, process applications too, but you need far lesser chemicals to uh, react with it because it is already broken down into smaller manageable molecules. Disintegration of biomass. Here again, in the effluent treatment, as a typical example, we can actually use it 
for breaking the hard shell of the microorganism uh, and uh, you can uh, really inside the body of the microorganism there are far more microorganisms which come out uh, into the open and it, that reacts with the effluents or whatever chemicals and makes it far efficient. We have in this particular case we can we guarantee that it will be around 15 to 30 percent but in our actual practice we have seen that we have had a 200 percent improvement in a effluent treatment plant with minimal cost. So payback within months, bad pricing actually. Disinfection of water and ballast water treatment, we are uh, working on it. It is still not uh, totally ready product, but it is again the physical damage which happens uh, to the microorganism, it just kills it. The uh, For disinfection of water, we want to fit it into every hand pump which is there in the country or in the world. So just uh, a bore well water or whatever water, you can just uh, have a substantially uh, clean water than what it ever was before. These are our customers at the present moment. As you can see, they are uh, quite marquee names. Our present uh, revenue stream comes from process application, biofouling prevention, effluent treatment uh, reactors. Way forward, we want to actually scale up and have uh, strategic tie-ups with uh, licensing across applications and uh, geographies presently funded by Godrej and World Bank and actually that is that, that is our team. We have uh, the same value system both of us and uh, complementary skill sets. So I hope uh, we with your blessings, with your actually blessings we will go somewhere. Thank you. Thank you.